want to welcome all of you here today. And this is for King and for JD. We appreciate you coming. Let me stand. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Invite his presence into this place today. He said, lift enough holy hands in the sanctuary. If you want to do that today, be a part. Father, we thank you and praise you and glorify your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy and for your grace. We thank you, Lord, that you're all sufficient. You're the one that's more than enough. You're my healer. Lord, we thank you. We praise you and worship you. Glorify your holy name. Glory to God. Move over this place, over this congregation to teach life. Lord, let your spirit fill this place. That everything that is done today will glorify the name of Jesus. And we give you all the glory, praise, and honor for everything that is accomplished. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen. Sister Lord is coming to lead you today.
something in the back of his mind that he never told me. So if he told anybody, I want to know that secret. If he didn't, I'd love to know. But J.D. was born uh, January the 30th, 1942. Five, he had about five years old. Now he had a long life. And he died on 17 He's 76 years old. Now, reading out of the paper, these things I don't, I didn't know. And that was about Holly. And he was born to Holly Burgess. So a lot of things about a lot of people I don't know. And I've been around them for years. So we've had our church going since 1982, and there's still things that I don't know about people because they don't share everything with you. And we try to spend as much time as we can with each person. And still don't know it all. We 
never will know it all. Jesus don't know it all. He just tells them what he wanted her to know. The way we are, the way men are, in a way they don't tell everything they know. And I didn't say that women do. I'm just saying that men don't. Preceding him in death are his mother and his son, Raymond Winters Jr. Surviving are his wife, Jeannie Brewer, son, Brian Kleckner, is that, did I pronounce that right? Kleckner? And wife, Donna, a daughter in law, Lynn Winters, five grandchildren, Brandon, Taylor, Kayla, Sarah, and Megan, a great granddaughter, Jessica, and a special friend, Michelle. J.D. has been a close friend of ours for a long time, and I really don't know how long he's been a close friend. I don't know exactly how we put all that together. I just know the ending more than I know the beginning, and that's the way it is about my life. I know more about this time than I do uh, about the beginning. And I know a little bit about when I was a little boy. So you don't want to know about that. I know that. But he's been a, a close friend of our family for a long time. And my mom really loved J.D. And he was always as far as he could do, do it. He was invited to our family reunion, just like the rest of our, us. But he, he was invited. And uh, so... There's some people, they thought that he was part of our family. But as far as I know, he's not related. But we got related when he, you know, through our salvation. So that makes us very related, okay? Uh, he was a tremendous help to me. And our struggles, when we was having struggles with uh, our church payment, and he would help me out. That's when we was paying the loan on our church. He was there for me. And he said, it's always, he said, if you need help, just let me know. He was always there for me. But we don't have that problem anymore. Our church is paid for him. We thank God for that. But it's, uh, he was a blessing when we needed him. I was told that he had 41 foster children. Now, I asked the question, did he take care of the 41 children? Or did Jimmy take care of the 41 children? <laughs> I don't know how you take care of 41 children. But I, I think they, that they just did it a little bit at a time when they were needed. I'm pretty sure that's what, what the way it was. You know. So I guess I'll give Jimmy a lot of credit. Am I supposed to do Jenny? Oh, man. <laughs> and just a little bit about him, he told me that he was part of a trio. And I asked him, I said, well, can you sing me a song? He said he didn't sing it like he used to. And I'll let Jeannie answer for that. Jeannie, how good could he sing? He was good. He said he was good, so y'all take that. As, as uh, J.D. was a very, he was, well, he was a very good singer. And since she's saying that, we just say he was great. Because <laughs> I don't know. So we are just make it as great as we can. I mean, why not try to, to help him out as, as all the way we can? And then... Somebody told me that, that he once had a real close country singer friend. And that when that guy would come to town, he'd come stay at their house. And I believe his name was Harold G. Was that his name? Conway Twitty. But his real name was 
Carol and Jimmy. But he would come and, and he would uh, spend time with uh, J.D. and Jimmy when you'd come to Wisdom for his concerts. Well, that Conway uh, was very famous in his in his music. So I guess uh, Jeannie and J.D. touched some uh, somebody special there, or maybe he touched them. We just according how you look at it. And then just another thing about J.D. I I know about he he had a, an inspection station in Danny. My brother worked for him in, uh, and helped him out with the inspections and he had a couple of run-in stores and, and I don't know how much he liked that or whether it was a way of just for income or whether it was just a hobby. He never did talk to me about that, so I really don't know. Uh, but he, he was in that for a long time and different ones in our family were able to help him in that uh, job that he had there and uh, maybe it was just something to do while he was resting. I'm not sure. But we know this, that J.D. made it to the promise that God has given us all. If we obey our parents and that's that we can live a long life of being at least 70 years old. And he made it there. And um, what, what I tell people in that is when they don't make it, they were shortchanged. Because there was some kind of reason why that people don't make it to the 70. And it's always some kind of uh, thing that uh, we wonder about. We don't know. This is things that we'll find out later on uh, as we go through this life and maybe in, into heaven. Um, but the last few years, J.D. has had some problems with his body. and But God was always there for him. He said, this is what God said. He said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. He said, I'll go with you all the way to the end of the age. And I went over um, to visit with him. And the thing that I recognize the most that he never lost his faith. He stood firm on his faith and uh, he never lost his faith. He told me, he said, last time I talked to him, he said, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to meet Jesus. And that he had no worries. And he said that God had been good to him. And this is the way he put it, he said, and everything's good. So I want to read to you just a little bit of the promises that uh, that's in the Bible. And the Bible says that, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth forever, you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. The days of our life are seventy years, and if by reason or strength they are eighty years, yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. We're just soon cut off, and we fly away. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in, the, in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with swelling. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. He said, cast your burdens upon the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be removed. For this is God, our God, forever and ever. He will be our God even to death. And he said, be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful to me. For my soul trusts in you, and in the shadow of your wings will I make my refuge until 
the, these calamities have passed by. I will cry out to God most high, to God who performs all things for me. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing his seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Now, in the, in the New Testament, the Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. And they that hear shall live. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there you may be also. For none of you liveth to himself. And no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And this, he said, and God shall wipe away all tears from your eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And just a, a thought. We're talking about we're just passing through. We had a beginning, came from God. As we all know, living here on earth is temporary. We're just passing through. We came from God. For God is a God of spirit. He created all things. Even, the Bible says, even the waster, he created him. For God is a spirit. And he created a spirit. And he put us in our body, our mom and our dad, to watch after us until we can take care of ourselves. They are to train us God's way. And in the end, take all we can back to heaven with us. So we are ambassadors sent from heaven to do a work in this earth. Now, I'd like to read just one this little small portion here in 2 Corinthians. In the fourth chapter, the fourteenth verse, he says, Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with him, with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might prove the thanksgiving of many re redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish. Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. We have a building of God and house not made with hands as our spirit, eternal in the heavens, for in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. 
For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up in life. Now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is God, who hath who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. That's what earnest means as a damn payment. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Now, for as much as it hath pleased the Almighty God, neither one is more than another. He's our El Shaddai. He's, he's there to make sure everything works. He holds everything together by his word. Himself. Well, let's, let's back up here. He said, For as much as it hath pleased the Almighty God to take unto Himself the soul of our departed. And I said, J.D. We bear His body to this place prepared for it, that ashes may return to ashes and dust to dust. And the imperishable spirit, refined as by fire, may be forever with the Lord. Amen. So let us bow our heads in prayer. Now, Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this word. We believe, Lord, as we spoke it, that, Lord, your word creates. Lord, then that that has been created is working. Something has taken place, just like when you call those things which be not as though they were. And you caused Abraham to be able to father a child when he was a hundred years old. Lord, we, we believe that the Creator is doing his work today and he's speaking. And as we speak, God, out of our mouth comes things that are created, that things that are made. And Lord, we believe right now that you're making something happen in this place. For J.D.'s done all he can do. So now we ask you, Lord, to overshadow this group of people with your spirit. And that you would come and minister your grace and comfort upon Jeannie and her family. And Lord, be with her. You said that you're a present help, Lord, in our time of trouble. This is a very troubled time. And God, you're her help. And Lord, you said you never leave her, you never forsake her. You go with her all the way to the end of the age. And Lord, that you're her comforter. And through these words, God, the Creator is, is, is making these things come to pass. And we thank you and praise you. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, I'm asking Joe to come back and do one verse and of course of that song. And we'll close with that, okay? I can see the family gathering, sweet faces all familiar.
Thank you, Lord, for touching her, touching her, her spirit, her soul, and her body. Lord, be with her for the next few days in a special way. Thank you. 